Quick reminder for all the cowards and peasants out there before we kick this thing off, the BDG3 Pass is closing our minting day this weekend. However, it is now available to cop via credit card, all right? So you don't got to go through Coinbase. You don't got to buy Ethereum for it. You can purchase it via credit card. Huge news for all the anti-NFTers out there, for all the anti-crypto people out there. You can still compete in the Big Dog Bash. This is our giant fantasy football league with everybody on the BDG team, as well as some of your other favorite content creators with a shot at winning 10,000 shares of our company. That is the grand prize for winning the Big Dog Bash. And if you grab a BDG three pass, you have the option of competing in the Big Dog Bash. Now available to purchase with credit card. Link down below to get there. We're also doing a giveaway for one of them, all right? You're allowed to mint up to two of the BDG3 passes. You compete doubly, twice as much. You mean two leagues, two shots at rare leagues. So anyone that purchases with a credit card will enter a free giveaway, which we will release on Sunday's video, put into a raffle, get a free one on top of that, all right? Let's talk about my single favorite draft picks in all of the first six rounds of fantasy football drafts today. <laughs> kicking it off with the first round of the Minnesota Vikings players, man. And listen, it's tough to pull an ADP from all these different sources. You could look at sleeper, you could look at underdog, which is like way sharper than most of y'all are going to have in your friends, family, even, even semi sharper leagues aren't as good as like the underdog ADP. So y'all can yell about it in the comments. I'm going to do my best to try to be realistic about where these players are going in drafts and, you know, them being in the round that I'm talking about. So we're talking about the Minnesota Vikings players. I'm talking about Justin Jefferson or Dalvin Cook. If you could leave round one with either of these dudes on your squad, you're going to look really, really, really good to start. We have Kevin O'Connell coming in, who came over from the Rams. He's now the head coach. I listened to a great podcast this morning, the Underdog Podcast from Josh Norris. He had Charles Robinson on, who's a great beat reporter uh, around the league, and he had you know amazing things to say about Kevin O'Connell coming over from Sean McVay's offense. And I'm really excited about the Minnesota offense to be a little bit more pass heavy, which I think gives Dalvin Cook a higher chance of staying healthy on the year. He is my RB3 in my rankings right now. Justin Jefferson is my wide receiver one in the rankings right now. So I am very high on this Minnesota offense. I think they're going to be moved all over the field. Dalvin Cook is still very much the workhorse. The Vikings clearly believe in that. They have Alexander Madison getting the run in the preseason games while Dalvin Cook is not touching that fucking turf. So Cook's a guy that can easily be the RB1 if he stays healthy. We'll hear that a lot. If he stays healthy, if he stays healthy. But there are not a lot of dudes that even if they stay healthy for the full slate of games, they could put up that C-Mac type of receiving and C-Mac type of just overall fantasy upside. And Cook's a dude that could rip off 25 points per game. All in on Dalvin Cook this year. Obviously, you got to be all in on Justin Jefferson. So if you can leave round one with either of the Minnesota Vikings players, which is a possibility from basically any draft spot in the first round, you're going to be feeling pretty good. Round two, there's a handful of dudes I like. And again, this is a little bit tough because we're seeing ADP swing pretty drastically at this point in the summer, especially with like news with Alvin Kamara moving up and down and shit. So I don't know where these guys are going to end up settling in ADP and in terms of draft. But I think a really, really good strategy for the first two rounds is you got to leave the first two rounds with either two running backs or a running back wide receiver. OK, so there's a tier of wide receivers that if you can leave with one of those guys, plus one of the top running backs, you're going to feel good. So either running back, running back, running back, wide receiver, wide receiver, running back. It's a really, really good way to build your team around that infrastructure. So in round two, there's five dudes that I would be really, really happy leaving with. Okay. It's Stefan Diggs, CeeDee Lamb, who I think occupy the top two wide receiver spots in the second round that are still part of that elite tier one. Uh, Stefan Diggs, I just think coming off of a little bit of a down year and everyone's playing that recency bias into it when he is arguably attached to the best quarterback of all the elite wide receivers, a guy who's going to see 165 targets, the best pure route runner, maybe bar Devonte Adams in the NFL. I think the chances of Diggs being the overall wide receiver one this year are like as good as anybody there, right? So Diggs, I don't understand why he continues to fall further than like the Devonte Adams is. And even like the Jamar Chase, I think they'll probably have similar numbers. CeeDee Lamb, the obvious case is that Dallas is a very pass heavy team, very fast paced team. They lose Mark Cooper. Michael Gallup is coming off uh, this ACL tear, this late season ACL tear. So both those guys are in the early tier for me. And I would be really, really happy as either of them being my wide receiver one. When we get to the running backs, I love DeAndre Swift here. I love Saquon Barkley here, and I love Alvin Kamara here. I think all three of them are workhorses with really, really high pass catching upside, which we've seen from all of them at this point in their career. Some of them have red flags. Some of them 
have you know lower ceilings or lower floors, whatever you want to say. But these are my three favorite running backs in the second round that I think if you can leave with any of those guys, you're going to feel really, really good if they are your RB2 or your RB1 if you were to get a Justin Jefferson in round one. So that's like five players there that I think you'll be really happy leaving with. If you want to go super early on tight end, I wouldn't hate Andrews here. Kelsey in round one is just not something I'm going to be doing. But if I want to go tight end early and secure that spot and you can get Andrews at like the 211, 212, 31, I'd be okay with that because Baltimore's probably going to have no choice but to go super pass heavy again this year because all their running backs are fucking hurt once again. When we move to round three, there's three guys that I think are really, really good values right now. Uncle Lenny out in Tampa Bay, Mike Evans, his teammate, and Titty Boy T. Higgins. All right, so Uncle Lenny's the clear workhorse here in Tampa Bay. I know people were worried about like Rashad White coming in and taking this pass catching role. I have a few problems with it, a few issues. One, if you look at the preseason first, you know, the week one, he came in as a fourth running back. He was playing against the third and fourth stringers. He didn't get in until later in the game. I think that pretty much speaks volumes about where he's on the depth chart. We won't go like too into that right now. We're about to talk about some preseason games and prize picks. I don't want to get too deep into week one preseason numbers because I think things will change week two, week three or whatever. And we're about to hammer some fucking prize picks for tonight's games as well so we can make some revenue on it. But let's wrap up round three first. Yeah, Rashad White got on the field late. I also think the interior of the Bucks line is going to be a problem for Brady, which means whoever is back there needs to be a trusted pass blocking running back. OK, Ryan Jensen's out for the year. They've the Super Bowl interior guard center guard that they had two years ago when they won. All three of those guys are out. I'm telling you, this is going to be a little bit more of a problem than most people are anticipating for Tampa Bay. And whoever is the running back needs to be someone that could pass block. He's raw, Rashad White. He's a great athlete, but he's raw. And I think that's going to be a problem to start the year and a problem during his rookie year with a guy like Tom Brady specifically. So I'm not really worried about any competition for Uncle Lenny. He was incredible down the stretch last year into the playoffs. He was averaging like seven or eight targets per game. I think he's starting to go underrated because we haven't heard enough hype throughout camp, but he's going to be the guy getting all the touches there in Tampa Bay. So we like Lenny. We love Mike Evans, obviously, Antonio Brown gone. We don't know what Chris Godwin's real status is at this point. I'd be surprised if he was a big impact player over the first six weeks of the season. Gronk is obviously retired too, so I wouldn't be surprised if Mike Evans ends up leading the league in touchdowns. I wouldn't be surprised if T. Higgins ends up leading Jamar Chase in touchdowns. T. Higgins is a fucking beast attached to Joe Burrow in a great offense. If you want a piece of the passing offense, you can go with Boyd way later on, but I like the upside of T. Higgins. He's been nothing but fucking dynamite the first few years of his career. He's excelled when he was the one. He's excelled as a rookie. He's excelled when Jamar Chase was put on the field and targets started to siphon over to him as the wide receiver one. Higgins is about as safe as they come in a sense Cincinnati uniform with upside that I think he could score, you know, 12 plus touchdowns. So the upside is there. The floor is there. T Higgins is a rock solid guy in the third round of drafts. Once we get to the fourth and fifth round, you have this, this wide variety of receivers on the outside where it's like, that's why I want to start with running backs early and often. And it's usually why I tend to lean towards running back in the first round or two or even three, because once you hit rounds four, you have this plethora, honestly, on this entire list, rounds four, five, and six, there's only one running back that I'm targeting as one of my top values at this point. The rest of them are, are wide receivers. In round four, we have Michael Pittman, Terry McLaurin, and Mike Williams. Pittman is a guy that I'm going to try to leave every single draft with. He's one of the few guys in fantasy football where I am way okay jumping a full round on ADP to make sure he winds up on my team. I think with Matt Ryan there, team's going to be fucking way smoother, way more efficient, just dynamite. And it's all going to be Mike Pittman, man. He is a pure separator. He's one of the best rated chart guys in reception perception per Matt Harmon. All in on Michael Pittman. I like Terry too. I think the upgrade from Taylor Heineke to Carson Wentz is, I mean, Wentz is whatever he is at this point, but I still think it's an upgrade. And I think Terry's just way too talented to not have massive games at this point. I would take Pittman over McLaurin. I would probably also take Mike Williams over Terry McLaurin right now because I just want pieces very much like with T Higgins. I want pieces attached to awesome quarterbacks and Justin Herbert's about as fucking awesome as they come. And this is an offense that's really fast paced, really uh, pass heavy. They go for it on fourth down. They're going to score a shitload of touchdowns. Justin Herbert's just entering his prime. I think there's a chance that we see Mike Williams super uh, surpass Keenan Allen on this wide receiver depth chart. I think they're both going to be great. I would rather take Mike Williams later than Keenan Allen. I would probably take, if I'm in two leagues, I would split the difference between Allen and Mike Williams. But I think if I was in like five leagues, I would take Mike Williams three times to Keenan Allen's two times. I have a little bit more confidence in him. I know he's kind of like on and off. He has his big games. He has his bad games. But with Mike Williams, you take the good with the bad and he gives you weak winning 
performances, man, when he's on the field and he just goes off and goes nuts where you don't see that often with Keenan Allen. He's not a guy that scores a ton of touchdowns. Mike Williams has that 10, 12, 14 touchdown upside, even if he's not catching 100 passes. I absolutely love him. You know what else I absolutely fucking love? The Tyler Goodson line on the Green Bay Packers tonight. So one of my favorite, favorite things in the world is attacking player props in preseason games because we can get a really good feel for who's actually going to get snaps. And that's really all you need to fucking know when it comes to preseason. And what we know for sure is Tyler Goodson is going to get a lot of them. Aaron Jones is not going to play. A.J. Dillon's not going to play. Tyler Goodson's line right now for fantasy points on prize picks is six. Prize picks fantasy line is full PPR. It's basically going to be two dudes sharing the rock. They need to know who their their running back three is. Kylan Hill is not healthy enough yet to be out for preseason. They need to know who their RB3 is right now, and it's going to be between Tyler Goodson and Patrick Taylor. And Tyler Goodson was very, very involved last game. 12 carry in the in the first preseason game against the 49ers. 12 carries for 37 yards. Also caught two passes for 24 yards. So that he easily went over the six fantasy points. I think he's even more involved this time around. So I think he tops that those, those six fantasy points really, really easily in this one. I think he's a smash on prize picks. And if you haven't been on prize picks yet, two things you're going to get by using our promo code BDGE. One, you're going to get a 100% deposit match to go smash that Tyler Goodson line along with another line that you can pick whatever you want. Drop in the comments who you like. Two, you're getting our fantasy football draft guide absolutely for free. So if you're wondering about my rankings, if you're wondering about our must draft players, our fade list or whatever, this is how you get it for free. Deposit on prize picks, $10 or more. Promo code BGE. You're getting all of the above. Plus, you're getting a fucking lock of the century tonight with Tyler Goodson. So let's keep moving down after round four. We had Pittman, Terry McLaurin, Mike Williams. In round five, we have Hollywood, who I think is going to go nuts, reuniting with Kyler Murray in Arizona while DeAndre Hopkins is suspended the first six games. Christian Kirk is not there anymore. More. Chase Edmonds not there anymore. It's going to be the Hollywood and Earth show for the most part, man. I think Kyler to Hollywood is something that we're going to see often, early, often, early, early, often for the first six weeks. And I think, you know, he's going to help you win like four or five of those fantasy games to start out. You know, when D Hop comes back, obviously he's a key cog of this offense. I still think Hollywood's going to be fantastic. Mm-hmm. I think Cortland Sutton, who is a fifth round pick right now, is also going to be fantastic. I would take him over Jerry Judy. I think his connection with Russell Wilson is going to be real, especially in the red zone where Russell Wilson dominates, is wildly efficient, and Cortland Sutton is the guy in that offense to be the red zone playmaker on the outside. He's a great scoring threat. He's really big. The jump ball is legit. And I think for the same reasons that we liked Cup over Woods last year, the touchdown upside for Sutton is way higher than it is for Jerry Judy, especially with Tim Patrick out the equation. And then I have A.J. Dillon here, man. I have A.J. Dillon in round five, round six. He's one of the other running backs that I feel really comfortable with grabbing at the end of the earlier rounds. I think Aaron Rodgers came out yesterday, two days ago. This is something I've been saying all summer. He was like, we need to put our best 11 players out on the field. And right now, our two starting running backs, Dillon and Aaron Jones, are two of the best 11 players. So I really think we're going to start seeing an unprecedented level of slot snaps from Aaron Jones this year. And I think Dillon's going to eat in the backfield. I think he's going to be their clear goal line back. He already surpassed uh, Aaron Jones in goal line carries last year. So I'm all in on A.J. Dillon. I think he's a great safe floor guy with an upside that's uh, relatively untalked about. Because I think even if Aaron Jones stays healthy, A.J. Dillon could see 250 carries. I think he could see 40 targets. I think he could see 12 to 15 goal line carries. So love A.J. Dillon here, one of my favorite value picks in the fifth, sixth round. And then we'll round this video out. Maybe we'll do a part two of this from rounds like seven to 12 or something like that. But round six, Allen Robinson, Rashad Bateman. Absolutely fucking love both of these guys, okay? Allen Robinson, he's still got the sauce. He's still got the juice. He's still a really good separator. Now he's moving over to the Rams offense where he's playing with Stafford. The only hesitation I would have is this Stafford elbow injury. I'm like going back and forth on whether or not I think it's a big deal, but I feel like everyone I listen to that actually knows any fucking thing about football is a little bit concerned about this. So I think there's a reason for hesitancy. If you want to just say, fuck it, I don't care about the elbow, then Al Robinson is is such an easy pick in round five, round six. Um, With Robert Woods gone, Odell Beckham gone, he is going to be the clear outside guy here with Cooper Cup running a fucking muck over the middle of the field. Robinson's got really high touchdown upside in this offense. And Rashad Bateman, I just think that with the injuries to the running backs in Baltimore, more, it's going to be difficult for them to rely on the ground again. I think they're going to have to pass like they did last year. And Andrews and Hollywood made up the single highest target share total between two teammates in the NFL last year. Bateman's going to replace Hollywood and the targets are going to come early and often. They've got nothing on the depth chart behind Rashad Bateman. He's one of the purest route runners that came out of that class last year. And they used a first round pick on him and, and, and gave no hesitation to giving away their former first round pick Hollywood Brown to move this guy up the depth chart. So it's going to be Bateman and Andrews over and over and over and over again. Those are my, I think like 18, 17, I don't know, favorite value picks of the first six round. I don't even know value pick, but my favorite 
targets in the first six rounds of draft. We'll run through it really, really quickly. It's Dalvin Cook, Justin Jefferson, Stefan Diggs, CeeDee Lamb, DeAndre Swift, Saquon Barkley, Alvin Kamara, Uncle Lenny, Mike Evans, T. Higgins, Michael Pittman, Terry McLaurin, Mike Williams, Hollywood Brown, Cortland Sutton, A.J. Dillon, Allen Robinson, Rashad Bateman. If you sprinkle your fantasy teams with a mixture of all of those players, you're going to be sitting very, very pretty for your fantasy drafts this year. If you want to draft with us, if you want to play against the team, myself, Animal, everybody in the office, if you want to play against all of our fucking creator friends, you know, the Jack Settlements and the Peter Oversets and the Ray G's, Matt Kelly, JJ Zacharyson, they're all in the big dog bash. They all hold BDG3 passes. Y'all want to get in on this. I promise you don't want to miss on our first year, our first go around and be part of the Genesis passes, the V1 passes. Again, available now for credit card purchase. You don't got to go through the Ethereum hassle if you've never used NFT stuff before. The link for that will be down below. Make sure you hop in the Discord once you do so, or if you have any questions, that's also how you go about doing it. And also go hit that Tyler Goodson line over six fantasy points. Use promo code BDGE if it's your first time on Prize Picks. I love y'all. I'm going to see you tomorrow with this same video, but my least favorite picks for the first six rounds. Salute. I fucking love you and tuck your shirts in for the rest of the day. Thank you.